Okay, this is the conclusion to the first section of the course. We started the course talking about an introduction to Greece, the Jews of Greece, the Jews in classical Greece, in Byzantium, Venetian period, when the Sephardim arrived during the Ottoman period, then the modern Greek period, then the Holocaust. Um, we talked about Salonika in the Golden Age in the 16th century, after the Spanish and Portuguese Jews arrived. We talked about the prolific Jewish community, the education, the rabbis, the uh, philanthropy. Uh, then we talked about Sabbatianism, the false Messiah Shabtai Tzvi, and the following and the ramifications. Uh, we also talked about um, the modernity, modernization, how the Judeo-Spanish culture uh, came to the forefront because of secular modernization. And then we also talked about um, other issues like theology, polemics between Greek paganism, Greek orthodoxy, and uh, Judaism and the Jews. We talked about mysticism, status of women. We talked about Judeo-Spanish. Um, we talked about differences between Jews and Hellenism, confrontations, commonalities, influences of how each culture and religion and people influence the other. We talked about various communities throughout uh, Greece and Macedonia and the northern part of Greece. Uh, first of all, of course, the, the Salonican Jewish metropolis. And then we talked about the Jews in the Ottoman Salonika, uh, then on other larger Sephardic communities in Thrace, in uh, Kavala and Komotini. Then we talked about the Jewish past in Varia, which is a small town to the west of Salonika. We talked about the Jewish community of Castoria. Uh, then uh, we talked about the remote Jewish communities in northeastern uh, Greece in the northeastern corner, like Komotini, Sufli, uh, Nearistias. Then we, finally we talked about Romanio Jewry. Uh, we talked a lot about the Jews of Yanina and their Judeo-Greek culture and Romanio culture, how they were overtaken in terms of the uh, halakha by the Sephardic Jews after the uh, arrival in the, in the area of the, the, of the Spanish exiles and and the predominant influence of the Salonic and Sephardic rabbis. And then we talked about a smaller Jewish community, a Romanian community of the Jews of Chalkis, and a little bit about their customs and, and their history. Uh, we talked about the destruction of 11 Jewish communities in the Greek Revolution. These were primarily Romanian communities. They were in Attica and also in uh, the Peloponnese. We talked about how Sephardic, uh, Italian, and Romaniot customs merged in Epirus and the Ionian Islands and uh, elsewhere, specifically in Arta, Corfu, and Crete, because when the Italian Jews came uh, after the expulsion, they came to like Arta and Corfu, and they, they merged eventually with the Romaniot communities. In Corfu, they were separate, but in Arta, they were totally taken over or dominated by the Romanio communities. We talked about a small Romanio Jewish community formed later in Prevaza. That's only like from the beginning of the 19th century. And then we talked about Romanio roots in Thessaly, which is in the middle central Greece. It's uh, uh, southeast of Epirus, where the, most of the Romanio Jews were, and it's north of the Peloponnese. But the Sephardim primarily settled there in larger numbers, but there was a Romaniot base. And then eventually Jews from Epirus and Yanina migrated to this region of Thessaly. So by the time the Holocaust came, you have a melange of cultures of these people. So in, in most families, they're not sp totally Sephardic, they're not, and they're not Romaniot. So you had a lot of marriages between the two and a merging of the cultures. So on one hand, they spoke Judeo-Spanish. On the other hand, the synagogues had uh, Romaniot prayer rite. Uh, but it, it, it gets mixed up today because everyone is thought of as being part of Greece. But if you look at it in terms of the particular cultures and who came from where, 
and, and which families merged and which communities are hybrid communities, then you see a different picture. So, in the section one, you see the diversity of Greek Jewry. You see Ottoman Jewry. You see the Sephardim coming to the forefront in Ottoman Jewry. But you see, particularly in the western part of the country, Romanian Jews, and also Italian Jews. And so I explicitly, throughout the course, talked about the various features of the Italian Jews, how they retain Sicilian culture, how they retain Apulian language and custom, how they retain, or how they, because they were under the Venetians for centuries, how that influenced their, their speech, for example. And uh, so in the total picture, it's very diverse. The Sephardim are dominant uh, numerically and in their attributes, and in the total picture, in, in 500 years, until the Holocaust, the Sephardic narrative is the dominant narrative. The Salonika narrative is the dominant narrative. But in this type of course, we're trying to portray the, and depict the diversity. So you have a glance of various elements. And we even talked about where, where, where Ashkenazim came to Salonika and other places before the Sephardim arrived and how, let's say, in Salonika there was still Ashkenazim during the Holocaust, one synagogue. Uh, so you, you see that no one is a purebred, but they're not explicitly Greek. You know, today it's a country of Greek nationalism and Greek identity, and the Jews are a minority. But their identity as Jews is not explicitly Greek. And even if they had a Greek Jewish culture, their culture was very diverse from the local Greek, Greek Orthodox fellow townsmen. Thank you for part one.